Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about staying away from the high end. There's no question that beautiful homes are, well, just that, beautiful. As always, fashion and tastes are always changing. Like clothing, homes make a fashion statement, and fashion has a lifespan. The gold doorknobs of the 1980s and 1990s are replaced with a cleaner look of brushed stainless steel. Colors like hunter green are out, and white subway tiles are in. Colonial-style moldings and trim are out, and cleaner lines are in. Thick pile carpeting is out, and hardwood is in. The warm tile colors are out, and cool colors like gray are in. But fashion goes far beyond finishings. The large mansions of the 2000s were in hot demand. Today, there's simply not as many buyers for those homes. It's partly demographics, but it's also tastes that have changed. The 5,000 square foot home on acreage is not selling as well as the more modern, smaller homes in a walkable community with access to the local coffee shop, the art gallery, and the neighborhood gourmet establishment. One of my clients is building two residential subdivisions in Asheville, North Carolina. This area of North Carolina's Buncombe County draws retirees with its mild climate and the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountain scenery. Homes under 800000 have been selling pretty quickly. So much so, there's actually a shortage at that price point. Many are electing to custom build. Mountain-gated communities like Ventana are doing really well, and homes under half a million are flying off the shelf. But homes over $2 million are sitting on the market. Last year, there were 32 homes in Asheville over $2 million, and only 16 of them actually sold. Asheville's a wonderful community. It's very artsy. It's got great restaurants. The town has earned a reputation as a food lover's haven. There's lots of craft breweries and converted industrial buildings. This is a story, though, that's playing out not just in Asheville, but all over the country. A lot's been written about the growth of senior housing as baby boomers are aging. But the thing to remember is that all those people going into senior housing, they've got to be coming from somewhere. What properties are they leaving behind? Boomers currently own 32 million homes and account for two out of five homeowners in the U.S. Picture's pretty similar in Canada and other Western nations. The problem is expected to worsen in the next decade as more baby boomers advance into their 70s and 80s. The age group where people typically exit homeownership due to health reasons or maybe death. Back in the 1980s, about 6.3 million people exited homeownership in the U.S. due to age. That number was a little over 9 million in the past decade and is expected to be over 12 million homes in the coming decade. Simply not enough younger home buyers to buy all those houses. The problem is particularly acute at the high end of the market. About a year ago, Fannie Mae published a report that takes a deep look at the problem from a demographics perspective. But you don't need to be an economist to see the problem. Just go onto your local MLS database and look at the inventory in the market by price point. If you compare the days on market for homes at the entry level compared with homes at the high end of the market, you're going to see a dramatic difference. And government agencies like HUD and stakeholders like Fannie Mae are increasingly focused on what it takes to make a smooth intergenerational handoff of home ownership. We know from Fannie Mae's research that millennials have been slower to buy homes than the previous generation. The main trigger for home buying seems to be having children. On average, Millennials are making babies about two years older than the previous generation. Their home buying is also about two years delayed. Millennials are also carrying way more student debt, so the demand is at the entry level of the market. The buyers for those sprawling mansions are simply nowhere to be found. They just don't exist in sufficient numbers. and Many higher-end homes are selling below construction cost, even in today's hot market conditions. So that brings us back to fashion. Even assuming there were enough buyers, which there aren't, and even assuming the younger homeowners could afford these larger homes, and many of them can't, and even if you update the home and get rid of all the dated finishes and colors to match modern tastes, these homes are not in the most desirable locations for younger home buyers. Most younger homeowners are not looking for such a large home on acreage. They want to be closer to the city. They want to spend their money on experiences, not accumulating possessions. The 1970s, 80s, and 90s were all about material possessions. Social values are changing, and younger people would rather create memories than buy more stuff. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.